So let's say we've got a couple different ways that our company will lay out a curve. It just depends on how long it's going to be. And so I'll show you kind of the basics of both ways. Both? Both. So one of the ways that we'll do is we'll just kind of pick our points. And let's say I want to curve it out to the edge of the field here. I'll go all over a little bit more, make it a little more dramatic. And then we'll just kind of make a half round picture. What we'll do is we'll just kind of walk it off because nothing's precise and give just some So if we do that, we can see that we've basically established some curves and this gives us a visual because you can walk in a pretty good line and get a pretty good visual on exactly how you want your curve to be. So that's one way of doing it that's pretty simple. The key is, is not to paint solid lines until you're sure you like what it looks like. But this gives you a visual so I can see if I didn't walk in quite a straight line or Maybe I don't like that. I want it to be a little more gradual. I can come out here and say, we're gonna go this way. So you can change your line pretty easily like that. That's one way. Another way that we've used to lay out curves is using a long 300 foot tape. This is only a hundred foot tape, so I don't know how far we'll be able to get. 100 foot? Well, I mean, I don't know how long that way. <laughs> it's really great that the people filming are so funny. It's like, I don't know how long it's going to take to get where we're at. About right now. About right now. That was you earlier. <laughs> yeah. We're actually pretty close to where we're at right yeah, now. Yeah, we're pretty close to where we're at. So this is something we do in our company. We use these screwdrivers a lot. Um, we got this from Jake Wilson. Uh, we use these for several different things. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that as we go, but curves is the number one. That should be about 100 feet where you're at. Hey, that's about exactly 100 feet. Exactly. I'm getting better at this. So we, what you can see here is we've given ourselves a nice visual line. And once we like that, we've laid it out. We've got a nice visual line on that. We can basically just take it, put some dots along it, and then paint the entire thing if we wanted to. Or we can just paint every, because we've got a tape measure out, if we're on eight foot centers or whatever, we can paint every eight feet, put an X there, and we know exactly where our posts need to be, roughly. Um, it becomes a little bit more tricky. We'll talk about concrete, but if you're gonna drive the post, basically you just put your X right underneath the tape measure and you just drive it right there. And then that, that ends up being your curve. Uh, so what we can practice, is the eyesight method. I'll show you a little bit about that. So we just went to Home Depot and picked these up. They didn't have any oh, surveyor laughs. Oh, Lowe's. Sorry, Lowe's. Scratch that. We went to Lowe's. Pick these up. And picked these up. And saw their planogram, which is pretty cool. If you don't know what that is, well, you should probably follow me on Facebook and you'd be able to learn all that stuff. Bring you all kinds of interesting things. Wait, there's their rodent. The, ro the state rodent right there. State rodent? Fire ants. Oh. As long as it's not a chigger. And then the state bird on your arm. Oh yeah. Stink bug. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just getting to see <laughs> all kinds of good stuff. And in Kay. 15 minutes, we'll have chiggers. <laughs> yeah, chiggers. That's why I'm not wearing flip-flops. I'd really be loving, love to wear flip-flops, but I'm a little worried about it. Besides, I want to be serious. I want people to take me serious. So I got these. These are my serious shoes. Those steel toe? Those are absolutely steel toe. Safety toe? Freaking ant. Is yeah, them. they're getting you. <laughs> Dirty little buggers. Okay. So we haven't picked these up. You got your level on your Evo? Yep. Yeah. Everything's Let's on grab here. Grab your level. Next Evo is going to have a fridge and a radio and a seat recliner. Every Evo comes free with a printing press for money, though. Yep. We're just going to set some of these out. Uh, we'll go like six feet on center. Just Four. So these are dummy posts, right? Yep. These are basically just so we can show you what's going on because we got to show you the eyesight portion of this. So normally we would not have a 
we wouldn't have our tape measure here. We'll just try and get them fairly close. You'd have an X or something that you're driving to. We're just going to try and show you visually. And this is a way that you could practice with your guys if you're running the fence company. Or you can go out and practice what you're doing a little bit before you get so ready to drive all your posts. All the materials that we've got for this little exercise, we bought at Lowe's because Mark just flew in. And we've got $75 invested in this for the lath, the paint. That was for a case of paint. Case of paint, yeah. A pack of six or eight of these, 12 of these things was like eight bucks. So a lot cheaper than a post. The survey lasts are even cheaper. And so the survey lasts are like two inches wide or something. They're about that wide. And they're really thin. They're only about that, that thick. They're four feet long. And that's what I was looking for, but they didn't have them. Apparently that's not a thing down here. Pretty tough to drive in this ground. It'd probably just break. That's funny you say that because this seems like gravy to me. Oh, okay, sorry. Everybody's got the hardest ground in the world, didn't you know that? Uh, I honestly think that there's people have harder ground. Oh yeah, this this ground's um, pretty cake to work. You know, on. I would not want to be that guy in Idaho. I'm not. I'm not for that. Lava rock and stuff like that. I'll pass. Oregon can pre be pretty tough too. This is actually pretty cake ground to work in. If you got the right equipment, any ground is, but. Okay, so you come back here, and now you can kind of see what's going on. All these are pretty close in line, but I'll let you stand behind this, come up kind of close to where you can see this. But if you look from this post to this post, you're gonna line up somewhere like right in here, right? You're gonna line up somewhere right in here. Now you can find out exactly how far, can you sight that in at all with, by looking at the camera? Where's your line at, somewhere in there? It's on the edge of the level. Right here? Yep. So now if you come to this one, because we've got the same sweeping curve. Do the same thing. Look at this one, where are you at here? Needs to go left. Yeah, more. And that may not be it. So that one was about a level. Show me where it is with my finger. Go ahead and show me where we line up. Right about there. Right about there. So we're about an inch less on that one. Where are you at here? Right there. So you see how we started off, we started off with the bigger gap and it's narrowing, but it's kind of narrowing. That gap is narrowing as we go this way. It's the because curve is the curve, out. the angle of the curve is changing. And so that's what you're looking for if you're gonna sight this curve in, is you're gonna be looking for that continual. Um, so if I look off the side of this and it's about a post width to the next one, that one's about a post width and some of these aren't exactly right, but you can kind of see what's going on. So if you're keeping, if your curve is fairly consistent, just like when you're going up and down hills, that gap will be the same. When that gap changes, that means that the angle of your curve or the radius of your curve is changing, just like the radius of your hill is changing. So this is a really good way to practice that and see what's going on. But they're all, I mean, this is pretty continual and what I'm seeing from from my vantage point is we've got about a width, one of these widths about every single one. That first one's maybe just a little bit wider uh, on this very first section, but every other one lines up about a width over here. So the, if I side them in, it's like right over here is where, about where we're lining up. And because we've got a nice gradual curve, that's what we should see on all of these. So now the other part of this is you could do the same thing and line them up and go up over a hill and practice doing hills and getting your grade uh, sighted in for height. What you can see right now is we can stand back and look at this and notice that right about here, we've got a dip. So if I look down the top of this. Third post comes up. Right here, to line up with these next two posts, I have to come down about an inch. If I go here, to line up with the next two posts, I've got to come down about three inches. So we know that there's a really big dip right here. And if we wanted to make that a little more gentle, what we could do, and then all of a sudden, now I need to be up here to line up with that one. So if we wanted to, we could bring that one up. That means this one 
So what we would have is if, if we couldn't see over the top of these posts, we would have a sight mark right here and we'd just be looking down the side to line up the sight marks, either high or low. Um, but because we can see over the top of these, what we would have typically down here is a grade mark. So I'd know whether or not I was too deep in the ground. And so I'm gonna try and keep that grade mark pretty close to the ground. See now this and have to go in quite a bit. So I probably have driven those too far right now to line up these four are all flat at the same plane or the same angle. And all of a sudden this one would need to come down about that far. And I'm gonna guess if we came down that far, uh, that would probably cause us a pretty big problem right here. So we'd have to come down that far and then all of a sudden we start working into the ground. So with all that said, what I, need to what I would need to do is come back here and bring some of those posts back up so that I don't fall down into that dip quite so far so that I can hit this post. And it's hard to see, but if you come up here, you can probably see it, Ryan. You can see how all these tops, if you kind of look across the top, they're all flat. So, and then come back to the next one. And you'll see that if you line up this top with this top, all of a sudden, now we're seeing three inches where we're lining up probably right about here, right? Yep. Up and so that's bit. a problem. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're about that far down, which means this post has to go down or that post has to come up. I vote that one comes up. So that one has to come up here. because if we had a grade mark on this, what we'd probably find is if we were trying to put five foot wire or four and a half foot wire on this, we're going to find that we're going to be too low and we're going to have to trench our wire in. So this post here would need to come up. Nope. Nope. This, this one. one. No, this one. That one? You start with this one. Okay. We'll just see if we can... So now instead of these tops lining up, now this post is about an inch high, which is gonna to be too high. So now we're just, uh, I'm gonna guess we're a quarter to three eighths high on that. If I sight across the top of these, uh, my sight line runs right into that end post and it's probably about that, that high there. And then we end up having posts that aren't quite tall enough to go in the ground. So that one's about the same height. Now I'm messing up my curve, so um, and I'm doing that somewhat intentionally. Because even though we've come up here. So that one's about three eighths high to get up to this hill. And now all of a sudden, if I'm three eighths high, I'm still all the way up here. So this is where our grade really changes. And I probably won't be able to be three eighths high here. I'll probably have to be quite a bit higher than that even. But the next one back, so right now, instead of being three eighths high, I'm about two and a half inches high. So let's go drive another one back behind us. Can you show them how all those are high just to try and come up this hill with a nice slope? You know what we need to do? What's that? Paint these. Okay, let's paint them. So you can clearly see what the grade's telling us. The grade's telling us that it's diving off into this dip and then all of a sudden we're trying to climb this hill back behind Ryan. So each one of these, if you sight across these two, you're gonna be low on this post by about three eighths of an inch because we're starting to come up that hill already. And then if you go back to the next one back behind you, Ryan, you'll see the same thing. We're gonna line up right about here. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that those two posts line up right about here on this one. And then we come back to this one. And what do you see? Probably about the same thing. Probably gonna line up somewhere right in here. Yep. And all of a sudden on the next one, go see where we line up. You can see that instead of lining up there, we're lining up down here, right? Yep. Quite a bit lower. Because all of a sudden that hill is starting to slope up much more rapidly. So we've kind of taken a big jump. So the key is now to, and I can kind of guess about how deep we are just by how far I'm pounding them in the ground. But right now, 
we're up about that high. On this one, we are up that high. So as we come up this hill and we establish a grade, we ought to actually plane out and the tops should get closer to each other. So this one, I'm gonna guess needs to come down. Now we're, now we're about that high. And once we establish an actual, like if this slope was continuous, we ought to see all these tops line up again eventually. Once we come up the hill, they should just stop and all the tops should line up. Unless we're coming up the top of the hill and then all of a sudden it planes out. Because terrain is irrelevant if it's all in the same plane. See, this one needs to come down just a hair, I think. And this is exactly how we do all our chain link fence and set it to height. Except you're using the pipe. We're using pipe and we're in concrete, so I mean, we're not hitting it like this. And this is kind of terrace, so we got a whole bunch of ups and downs. And what you're gonna wanna do is either you gotta keep it close to the ground or you're gonna have to make it flow. It's really dependent upon what your customer expects of you. These are not plumb. This is just a way that you can take this home and practice it. And I would definitely, if you were gonna do this, I would encourage you to put a grade mark with your wire height on here so you know how deep you, I mean, that's the maximum you can go on the ground. That'll make you even better. But that's about what I'm gonna say. So we're flat and then we kind of come down and then we start coming back up. And this is how we set all these to height. And if you stand back and look at all this, while it's not straight, that's not our point is to get all this straight. It's to make sure that we can get that flow. If you're wanting to learn this, this is exactly what I would tell you to take your guys out and do practice doing this. Only don't do it for 66 posts, do it for 20 or 30 posts and really have them figured out and get some challenging terrain like what's back over here. Make them go up and down and make sure that those grade marks don't go into the ground. So if you're putting 1348 too, I'd have a grade mark down here at the ground that would be 48 or 50 inches, you know, just depending on how much reveal you wanted. Um, if you're doing ag fence. If you're doing six foot chain link, I'd have a grade mark. What type of ag fence? Well, see, we coined a new, would you like to tell them about the word you came up with? It's not just a word, it's a way of life. It's, it's a way of life. It's a, it's a whole new style of fence. So Ryan here was trying to figure out what his ideal customer was. He says, you know what we do? We do ornamental agricultural fencing. And he's the only one in the world that does that. I've never heard anybody else that does ornamental agricultural fencing. So he's found his, his niche, and that's what I suggest you do. You find your niche. That will make you successful. He knows who his customers are. So if he's driving down the road, and they've got just regular old barbed wire fence, he knows that's not a customer for him. That's not ornamental agricultural fencing. It's not ornamental at all. Yeah. It's just barbed wire fence. If you got t post, you're out. Yeah, you're out. You are not in the club. So this, now that we got all these kind of, you can kind of see what we've done. So we have a radius here and all these posts are not straight or anything like Woo! that, but we've built a radius. I hear you, Ray Charles. Plus we've, I, I wasn't worried about plumb. That was not what we were teaching. We were hoping that the people watching this video already knew what plumb meant. But you step behind that one and you can see how all those tops line up, Ryan. Come back one more. And all these tops should basically line up. If you can see that. I don't know how well it shows up in the camera, but. And then better way to one, do it is do it in person here. Come you know, on down. Come on down. You can come to Wyoming, you can come to North Carolina. So if we kept going, what we would see is, is how all of these lined up when we were coming up the hill. We saw more posts sticking up down there above. So these would line up and we would see more sticking up down here when we lined up the two. As you come over the hill, you're gonna see the exact opposite of that happening. You start seeing as you come down a hill, you can see this one and this, this one and this one here would come line up and it'd be higher than kind of like what we talked about in the, on the chalkboard. These two, if you line them up, I'll look at it and see. Yeah, so these two line up right here and the line between these two is above it. That's because we're in a dip and we're coming up a hill. So you see the reverse. Like I say, it's just like the curve. We're not trying to make sure the gap is always exactly the same because the slope is not always the same and the curve radius is not always the same. 
what you're trying to see is, is that it might get bigger and bigger and bigger and then start gradually getting smaller and smaller and smaller or it could get smaller and then get bigger and bigger just depending on what you're trying to do whether or not your uh, radius or your angle is increasing or decreasing um, so you're looking for that consistency but with what we've done here you can clearly see that we've established a radius and we've got them to height because you can stand back and say with my eye does that look good right yeah you can see whether or not it looks like it flows or not without any boards on it or anything and so always stand back when you're doing these radiuses and when you're doing these height things and say does that look good to my eye because if it doesn't look good now it won't look good when you start putting ra rails and stuff on it been looking for this wrench lost there it, it is lost it in the summer of 82. i finally got it back here can i warranty it it looks like a craftsman it's a lifetime lifetime <laughs>